Welcome back to my channel, Scale Model Kit Review. This is Steve. I am back with another review of an airbrush. This is the Gallery GHAD-68 airbrush. And as you can see, it is a grip type airbrush, dual action, 0.38 and 0.5 millimeter airbrush, meaning they do give us both of the size needles in this kit. Now, someone did ask me why am I purchasing these uh, less expensive airbrushes when I own some very expensive ones. The simple reason is I wanted to do a review on my channel to show you the quality of these airbrushes. You don't necessarily need to spend a whole lot of money on an airbrush. Now, if you're new in the market for trying out an airbrush, why would you want to spend hundreds of dollars on an airbrush. Some of the airbrushes go for 200, 400, 800, 2000. Just depends on the quality of that airbrush and how much you want to spend. This airbrush right here will run you less than $70. It's almost the same as the airbrush I previously purchased and that was the the GAD 39 airbrush. I'll put a link down below on the review of that airbrush. Remember this airbrush costs less than $50. This one right here can run you less than $70. I'll put a link down below on how you can purchase this and also a discount code is in down below so you can get uh, I believe it's 15% discount for this airbrush when you uh, purchase it. So with this review, I'm going to go ahead and take it out. We'll look, we'll look it over. I'll take it apart because that's what you want to do with your airbrush. When you first get it in, you want to take it apart, make sure everything looks okay, make sure everything operates correctly. I'll take it apart, put it back together, and then we'll test this out. I got a quarter scale resin bust. I need to prime and get ready to go. So we'll do that with this airbrush here. Take the cover off and uh, nice boxing, very hard, nice storage box to keep your airbrush into. It was sealed, I cut the seal, but I haven't really looked at it yet. And they do give us an example of what this airbrush is able to perform. It's a test sample and very nice too. Most airbrushes don't even give you instructions but this one does so if you're not familiar with airbrushing this is definitely something to have and to follow and right away they do give you some extra seals very nice two different size color cups or paint cups are provided with this uh, the point five millimeter needle and the nozzle. Everything is tight in here, but there's the nozzle there. The quick disconnect attachment for the bottom of the airbrush. That's very nice too. Most airbrushes don't give you that. Uh, needle juice, as we call it. Lubrication for the needle mechanism. If I can get it out. So most airbrushes don't give you that also. Take this out and definitely is impressive there. We've got a little protective cap on there. Pull this aside and give you a view there of that. This is considered the advanced airbrush just like the previous review I did. So everything is loose here and we'll need to be tightened down. Which is fine. That tells me that they have assembled it and everything seems to be just fine here. And what's nice here, Gallery does give you a breakdown of the airbrush. 
found on the lid of the box. And of course, having that illustrated breakdown of the airbrush will be very handy when you're going to put this back together after a cleaning in case you forgot how it came apart. But let me go ahead and show you a few features about this airbrush. Of course, this is a handheld version of the airbrush with a trigger. And uh, it's very handy for a lot of folks who, who have problems holding a regular airbrush. It's uh, more comfortable too. You can probably spray a lot longer with this type of airbrush versus the other. Your hand and fingers won't get as tired. Now it does have two different size paint cups, which is very handy. Um, like I said, it already has the quick disconnect feature on it. And it does have the trigger limiting part here on the end. You screw that in all the way and it will limit how far back you can pull back on the trigger if you want to do short bursts all the time and they'll be the same every time you do it. So that's what's nice about that. A lot of your more expensive airbrushes have that feature. This one has it. So we'll go ahead and take this apart. I like to take the needle out first. That way, less risk of having any, any damage to it. So I'm going to take the locking knob off the end that holds the needle in place, pull the needle out, and this is where you can go do a thorough inspection of the needle and make sure everything is okay on that. We'll put that aside and then we can go on along and proceed to take this apart. I'll take the, the paint cup off next. And if you look in there you can see there's a seal which makes that very nice. Next I'll go ahead and take off the needle chucking guide and spring case. Take that apart next and you can see this has a very large spring on it. A needle guide. That's good there. And that's taken apart. That way you know you want to do a thorough cleaning you can you have the ability to do that. Next, uh, we can take off the handle if we need to. I'm going to take the quick disconnect off and we'll loosen this off so we can remove the handle. Handle should just slide right off. And then we can take the air valve off. And you can see that how that all looks. It does have a seal on it and its own spring and the air valve with the seal. Okay. So we definitely don't want to get this uh, confused with our other parts. So we're going to keep that separate from the other spring. Okay. Next, we can actually take this off here, if you have a small screwdriver, I'm not going to take that off, but that allow you to take this off, your trigger off. And we'll take the, the needle valve off. It's two parts. There we go. With the needle guide. Now, we've got a close-up of that. And you can see there, it has its own seal on the end. So that's your nozzle. That's the 0.38 millimeter nozzle. If you can use the 0.5 millimeter needle, you need to use the nozzle for that also. Okay. And there's the airbrush taken all apart. A lot of pieces and parts. The only thing I didn't take apart was the trigger. But there you have that. I'm going to go ahead and reassemble this. Let's go ahead and put this back together. But first I wanted to point out something. There is a set screw here that holds what they call the needle guide in place. And you can change the seal out that, run, that keeps your uh, paint from running back into this area. So that's very nice. We'll go ahead and put 
the air valve together. Now in this case, we'll take this part here and we want to make sure the long part of this plunger goes in first. And the short part here actually goes in first, so that's going to be inserted. Then we'll line this up and screw that in. That's good there. Don't feel any jamming or anything like that going on. And I'll go ahead and put the handle back on. And this will keep that in place. Keep the handle secure. Go ahead and put the quick disconnect adapter on. That's good there. Now, we'll go ahead and put our needle chucking guide in next. And it simply just goes in like that. Feeds in one way, so don't force it. Put our spring in next. And then our spring sleeve on top of that. That's good there. Okay. Next we'll go ahead and put our nozzle in. So our nozzle is going to fit into the uh, nozzle cup itself. So we're just going to put that in to where it falls in place like it's supposed to there. And then we'll screw that down. good there. And then we'll put on the needle guard. And lastly, put the needle in last. And this is where you want to use that lubrication on it. And we'll slide that in very carefully. Uh, it's not designed to go in this direction. A lot of people like to protect the end of the needle and try to put it in that way. There's just no way to do that in this case. You could slide it in ahead of time. You know, you could... But there is a way to do it. So you can take this and you can slide it in like that to protect the end of your needle. But you want to pull it all the way back so it's not in the way here. And then put our nozzle back in the cup the way it's supposed to go. And screw that down. Now, so all we have to do is slide the needle forward until it stops. Don't uh, push it too hard because you could split the nozzle. So you just want it up against it. And then we'll put our lock mechanism on it. That'll lock the needle in place. And then when we actuate it, so it feels really good. And handle with the limiter on there. I'll screw out that limiter and put our paint cup on and it's all set. There you go. It's all together. Let me uh, hook up an air hose to this and we're going to test this out. I'll be right back. 
Okay, I got my air supply hooked up to it. I do use a Mac valve, which can control my air supply also. I have my airbrush compressor set at around 15 PSI. Uh, excuse the noise, as that's my venting system. and It's kind of loud. But you should still be able to hear me okay. Let's give it a test of some air here. If you look inside, I got the cap off. It's very nice. Nice finish in the cup there, very nice. So we're going to go ahead and give this a test. I'm going to use this uh, Pro Acryl Primer from uh, Monument Hobbies. This is a dark camo green primer. I'm also going to use some flow improver and some airbrush thinner. About two drops. And put some thinner in also. Eight drops thinner. I plan to spray the entire bust this color. Mix it up. And give it a couple of test sprays here. Okay, that's good there. Just give an air and pull back a little further, gives you the paint. And I like what that does. That's nice. Get a little closer and we can get some fine fine details there that's nice i really like that okay so i have a quarter scale bust and it is of a i'm not sure what it is it's a fairy of some sort got this from ny3d creations she's been primered with sem primer just to uh it's a high build primer just to get rid of some of the swirls and such from the printing process, but she's in great shape. But I really, I really want her uh, a green color first, base color. So go ahead and start spraying it. And mainly where her skin tones are going to be. Kind of see that. I like it.
so I'm very pleased with how this paints. Very nice. So what I'm going to go ahead and do next is uh, change colors. So I'm going to clean out my airbrush here real quick. I'll be right back. So I did seal her with the Krylon UV Matte Finish. And just her skin tone, you can see we have that nice dark green primer on there. Now next, I'm going to go ahead and put Terracotta Colored Steinol Res, Badger Steinol Res. I did heat it up, so it's been, it's been preheated. It's going to go into the airbrush neat, not thin. And they do recommend you use a 0.5 millimeter. I'll go ahead and stick with the 0.38 to show you you can spray Steinol Res through a 0.38 millimeter needle. go. I have my pressure set at 30 PSI. I'm going to turn down my MAC valve all the way. I'm going to open it up just a little because I want to have a smaller flow or not a very thick flow, right, of the Steinol Res. So there we go. That's what I want to have coming out of it. So I'm going to spray her. She's looking to the side, so I'm going to spray her just like that initially, just to get some color for her skin tone. And you can see that, how that works. be darker on her left side than on the right side. Same with her shoulders. Get her shoulder with that little bit of green tone underneath. I really like how that looks. And same with the other shoulder. I like that, how that looks. We get her ears. I kind of highlight the leather here with the terracotta. Bring up my pressure just a little more. There we go. That's how she looks there.
That's how that looks. So I'm very pleased with how this sprays the Steinol Res. Now, the Steinol Res dries very hard. It's sandable primer. It's very good primer. It levels out really nice. It's very detrimental to your airbrush if you don't clean it out right away. So I would recommend you clean it out right away. I'm going to go ahead and spray just a little bit into her hair. Just from a distance. Use up some of this Steinol Res. real quick. That's good. Go ahead and clean this out and I'll be right back. So I'm very pleased with the outcome of what was airbrushed here with the green tint and the terracotta over this. I'm going to go with some uh, flesh color too on top of that also a little bit later. I'm not going to show it on video. I think you get the gist of what this airbrush is capable of doing. Um, along with the card that I sprayed here. I'm very pleased with this airbrush. It's uh, definitely worth its weight in gold. For an airbrush that's less than $70, you can't not go wrong. Um, it's easy to handle. It's not real heavy. It sprays very nicely. The trigger is very easy to control your your paint output from the trigger there and I'm very impressed with this airbrush I think this probably performs a little bit better than the previous airbrush that I reviewed earlier I'll be right back and there you have it this was the gallery advanced series GHAD-68 airbrush it's a fantastic airbrush don't forget it does come with a 0.38 or the 0.5 millimeter needle and nozzle so you get both of those it's dual action you get the extra larger pot for the paint and that's very nice there it does have a drop-in self-centering nozzle for easy cleaning and allows you to spray your projects for a long time without fatigue Head over to Amazon. I put a link down below and purchase this airbrush. Use the discount code I gave you down below and you'll get 15% off. If you like my content, please subscribe to my channel. Now remember, I do have more expensive airbrush brushes and I did want to review these new airbrushes from Gallery for you to show you you don't have to spend a great amount of money for a good quality airbrush and if you want to try out an airbrush this is the brush for you to try out without having to spend a whole lot of money so happy modeling everybody and take care